So as you can imagine, you don't just build a robot and send it into space. This isn't the robot that you would want to send into space. In fact, this is just a test bed that we use in order to test these kind of things here on Earth before we send them into space. So we'll build a number of different robots when we're testing things. We'll use a robot like this one to test navigation software. And so we'll have a number of different elements that come together and eventually we'll bring those things together into one design. We'll build that design here and eventually, we do a lot of testing on it, eventually we send it into space on a flight program. And it can take 10, 10 years from an initial, uh, initial research into this type of system until when it flies. So right around the year 2020, uh, man will be returning to the surface of the moon. So you guys could all be involved in, in getting this type of system onto the surface of the moon. Okay, so what we have here is a robot that we use for testing autonomous navigation. And what that means is uh, we're testing software that allows us to get this robot to move from where it is to some desired goal location. So we might tell it that we want to go over to the other end of this big area that we've set up. But we don't tell it about all these obstacles in advance, so it has to figure out where those are using what we call sensors on board the robot. And sensors are things like cameras, so we might have a pair of cameras that we use to detect obstacles. We also have what's called a LiDAR system, which is a device that uses light to figure out the distance to things. So you can imagine if I had a laser that's on the pointing right about here, I can try to measure the distance to that box using a laser. You can buy a system like that at Home Depot that will measure distance using a laser. Well, we have a device here that does that, but it does it at many, many different angles. So we can actually build a map of all the obstacles in front of the robot before it even bumps into them. Okay, so what you're looking at here up on the screen is a view of what the robot sees through its sensors. And all of these black things are obstacles that it's seeing with that laser scanner down at the front of the robot, that blue box. So, for example, there's a cone there. So this is what the robot is seeing. It doesn't see the way you and I see with our eyes. It's seeing different information. So it has to avoid all the obstacles and make plans based only on this type of information. So what we can do is actually take our mouse and we'll click on the screen to give the robot couple of places that we want it to go. So these blue circles are places that I want the robot to go and visit. There might be a rock that a scientist would want to examine on the surface of Mars, for example. So we would give the robot a goal to go and visit that rock. So I'm going to hit go. Now, once I hit go, I'm not doing anything else. There's no joystick involved. Look, Ma, no hands. So the robot is actually seeing all of you right now. It knows there's a wall of people right there. And as it gets to each of these goals, they're going to turn from green to yellow. So now it's got to that goal, and it's going to try and move on to the next one. It's detecting all of those boxes and all of you while it's moving, and it's making a plan to get from where it is to the goal. It takes sometimes as long as half an hour to send a signal from Earth to Mars, which is one of the main reasons why we want to make this thing drive itself instead of having us drive it with a joystick. So the question is, does it have artificial intelligence? Well, I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. I actually think intelligence is in the eye of the beholder, so I like to think of this as autonomous rather than intelligent, but it depends on, uh, depends on you, how you think of intelligence. We use different uh, types of sensors for both engineering and scientific purposes, so we would use some sensors to help navigate the robot, and then we might stop at the rock and use an entirely different sensor or a scientific instrument to gather real data that can help the scientists understand about those rocks. It's essentially, you need a, a chassis on the bottom, something with wheels that has motors that helps the thing drive. You need a computer to run your software, and you need some sensors to gather information about the environment around the robot. Those are the three main elements of building a robot. Okay, so this robot, probably just the hardware is well over $100,000. What happens if there are rocks that completely surround the robot? Then what will it do? In that case, what it'll do is it'll actually be able to detect those rocks all the way around it, and then it won't be able to get to where it wants to go. And in that case, In that case, what it will do is it won't be able to make a plan, and it will just stop, and then it will send a signal back to Earth, to us, who are 
operating the robot remotely and say, I'm stuck, I need some help. What should I do? Okay, so the one that goes to Mars is about, uh, the ones that are on Mars right now are about 200 kilograms. So that's uh, 440 pounds, if you want it in pounds. And this one is, I think, about 300 pounds. How do I send a command from the computer? So in this case, we're just using standard wireless internet. I don't know if you have that in your house, but it's the same kind of thing you would buy and put in, uh, in your house to let your laptop talk to the internet. Same thing. Was this robot ever on Mars? So that's a really good question. Nope, this robot's never been on Mars. And in fact, this robot will never go to Mars. This is just a robot we use for testing out this type of software before we put the software on the real robot that does go to Mars. So the robot has what's called a sensor, which is kind of like your eyes. You use your eyes to figure out where things are in front of you, right? So if you're walking along, you see that with your eyes, and then you know to go around it. The robot doesn't have eyes like us. It has other types of sensors. Those can be things like cameras, just like your digital camera. It takes a picture, and then we use software to figure out from that picture where the obstacles are. That is actually the best question we've had all day. Why do we want to send robots to Mars? I probably didn't explain that too well. So the main reason for sending a robot to the surface of Mars is to gather scientific information so that we can learn about the past history of Mars, whether there was any life there, and whether we can understand more about life on Earth by learning more about Mars. Because these two planets are actually pretty similar. Let's give a big round of applause to uh, Timothy, Joseph, and Nadine from the MBA Robotics Systems. Thanks for coming out today. This is um, a robotic which I made. It's Look called the way, Black guys. Monster, and it's all good. Mine's the bad man. See, he's mad. Hey guys, look here. Okay.